So to get started for this, one, I'm just going to press Shift A, go to Mesh, grab myself an Icosphere here. I'm going to give it five subdivisions and then right click and Shade Smooth. Then I'm just going to grab a model that I already have to put inside of the amber that we're going to be making so we can see the transparency as we work. And I just have a dragon that I modeled a while back. I didn't model the feet because I forgot about them, but I'll get back to that eventually someday. Anyways, I'm just going to take that and I'm going to position him at a zero zero. So he's right inside of here. He's a little bit too big right now. So I'm just going to scale him down a little bit like that. So now he's inside of everything. So we have a cool effect going on. So now I'm going to head over to the shading tab. I have my 3D viewport set up and then my renderer up here. I mean, my node editor, not my renderer. Then I have a uh, rendered preview. I'm using the unchecked scene world and the forest for the built-in lighting like so. Then make sure you're using cycles. You can also get this to work in Eevee if you tweak some things on the material, but I'm going to be using cycles for this if you want to get the exact same results as me. With the sphere selected, press new first. Then we can name the material, I'll name it amber. Then I, now I can press the base color here and we're going to give that the amber color because we're going to be, normally I would go ahead and add some textures, but today we're mixing it up so we can see things as we go. So this hex value for the amber is going to be an FFBF00. Again, that is an FFBF00, just like that. So now we have our amber color. All right, so now that we've added our color, we're going to go ahead and change our index of refraction and transmission. So the transmission will put it a one. And then the index of refraction for amber is a 1.539. So we'll go ahead and change that as well. Now, as you can see, it's not very see through, and that's because the roughness is too high. And so we need to be adjusting that. And to do that, we're going to do that with a noise texture. So I'll press Shift A, search for a noise texture like this. Sweet. Then we'll want to make sure you have the Node Ringer add on checked in your preferences. So edit preferences, add ons, and then search up Node Wrangler and hit the checkbox. It'll give you some shortcuts. Then with this selected, we'll press Control T which will give us this. Then we'll take the object from the coordinates and to the mapping. Then we control shift and left click this noise texture. I'm gonna move the scale up to a 100. So it's really fine. Then the detail to a 14. And I'll move the roughness all the way up to a one. Then I'm gonna grab this guy. I'll move him a little bit to the left. I'm gonna press shift A and search for a map range node and plug him in after here. So the factor is going into the value. This is going to go into our transmission roughness. So on this guy, we're gonna change this to minimum value to a 0.025 and the two maximum value down to a 0.3. So we keeping between those values on the roughness. Then we can plug that into our transmission roughness, or actually our normal roughness, like that. Then with this selected, I'm gonna press Control Shift D. This one's for the transmission roughness. And I'm going to take this bottom guy to a 0.15 on the two max, and then this two minimum to a zero. So we preview, we have this and this on the top one. And then we take this result into the transmission roughness just like that. So now if we can shift and left click this shader, it is looking really good. We don't have any bump though, and so we want to add a little bit of bump. And it's so cool how we can see the inside of that and everything. So nice. So then to do that, we'll hit shift A. We're going to search for one last noise texture. And we'll take this vector, plug it in. Control shift to left click to preview this guy. I'm going to down the scale to a 3. Up the detail to a 10. And then the distortion to a 2. That's going to give us the swirly effect. And I'll press Shift A and search for a map range node so we can change the values. Then this two maximum value, I'm going to bring all the way down to a 0.1. Just so we don't have too much effect here. Then I'm going to press Shift A, search for a bump node, just like this. Take this result into our height, and then the strength on this bump node to a 0.05. Take the normal into the normal. And Control Shift left click to preview, and we have our finished amber material. And as we can see here, we can see the inside of the dragon really well. Currently, if I hide our amber, we, the dragon is just white. I haven't given it any material. And so I'm going to go about, head back to the layout, and I'm going to give him a material. Let's go ahead and search up my wounded reptile skin that I made a while back. There's also a tutorial for that one. And then if I go back to the rendered preview, we can see that it is showing up quite nicely on him. Very cool. It looks like he's been in lots of battles. Nice. So now if we go back up to here and we unhide our icos here, we can see through nice and cleanly so it's like he just finished a battle and got trapped in some tree sap or something or amber and and now he's fossilized in here obviously the higher the samples get the less grainy this looks but this is the final material obviously you can change colors around and stuff like that to make this your own but yeah it's super cool anyways i will see y'all guys in the next one